we have what we describe as non-elite squads. Uh, we ask the clubs to send in three players at under 14, 15, 16, 17, and they must be uh, in their final year in that age group. And our objective all the time is to try and produce three or four players that will be uh, go on and play senior in the county. That's, that's the objective. If we win at underage, that's great, but that's not the overall objective. No, we're, we're, we're especially grateful to, to the clubs and to the school teacher, both primary and secondary. Well, Adrian, so many people are envious of the school you have here. Why is it that you have such a tradition in hurling? Well, the school itself has a fantastic tradition. From a hurling point of view, we have over 100 years at this stage of, of hurling in the college. I think every club and, and school, primary and secondary, has a very good relationship with uh, the county board in Kilkenny. You know, they've supported a lot of our initiatives here in the school, would say in terms of pitches and fields and so on as well, and uh, they've provided a lot of support for us over the years. And, you know, it's, it's symbiotic in that we provide those fields then during the summertime for uh, the county teams to train here. So you're back here at Kieran's. What sort of memories do you have of here? Yeah, I suppose great memories, Joanne. Um, I suppose um, every suppose, child or pupil when they're coming into secondary school, um, especially it's the St. Kieran's, are probably coming with two things in mind, probably with a, to get a hurling education and to get an education inside the classroom. But um, certainly both have stood me well and um, great times and uh, picked up plenty. of learned a lot in my time in St. Kieran's and very much from the teachers and uh, I'm very grateful for, for the couple of years I spent here. The great thing about the youngsters of this generation is that the team is the shop window and the team is selling the game for the county. The, the bulk of the current senior panel probably would have came through the development squads and I suppose right now I suppose is a golden generation for Kenny Hurling and I suppose the, re the rewards of that work is definitely done through the squads and at underage and at facilities such as St Kieran's. How is it interwoven between St Kieran's and then Kilkenny itself and say all the clubs? I suppose great friendships are, are developed and, and fostered over their time here and it often means I think when lads go to Hurlick and Kenny that uh, you know, there's great rapport and friendships between them and you know, many lads would often say that it's almost like hurling for their own club when they're hurling with Kilkenny. When the players come into the county system in Kilkenny, Michael Dempsey remarked this when he joined the backroom team, they become a club. They, they leave, as he said, their club rivalry outside the door and their, their team Kilkenny when they're in there, whereas the week after they all learned, the day after they all learned, they'll be fierce rivals again. We're a small county as well, it's not generally recognised amongst all the top GEA counties. We are the smallest population wise, way smaller than our, our immediate opponents. And, uh, but instead of being a weakness, I think that's a strength because we all know each other, we know what's happening. We have 36 parishes, we have 12 senior clubs, you know, it's not, it's easy to keep a handle on it, which is very important that we pick up every talented young fella and that's, how, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, can I just tell you, by the way, here at Croke Park, uh, the minor All-Ireland final between Dublin and Tipperary has just finished, and it has finished Dublin 116, Tipperary 213. That, of course, Liam Sheedy, a draw. Yeah. And Tip weren't going great there for a while in that one. No, Tip never, never. you know, that's the thing about minors. Then All-Ireland final minor day, it, it's a big day, and obviously your senior team aren't here, so mm. you're sort of mm. out there on your own, and mm. there's a big crowd coming in, and, you know, it... it Clearly, Tipperary never found the rhythm, but you know, full credit to Dublin. I think you know they went two points down in a few minutes to go, and they got their two scores. Paul Paul Winters had a difficult enough free to to equalise it, but you know, John McGrath was keeping Tip in it really from midfield from place balls, and uh, it didn't really find it. I think overall, the draw was probably the first result, and didn't really reach the heights of what you'd normally yeah. see from minors. So I think both teams would be disappointed with that. But you know, Dublin maybe lost their chance. Um, they might feel, but again, you know, two of them will meet again probably. In a, is it? I'm not sure. Will it be a week or ten days mm -hmm. or a week or two uh, when the commander? again but you know they'll both be going away saying we could have had our chances we could have won this game today all right Liam, thanks for that uh, let's move back again to the senior final and we want to talk a little bit uh Ger, about the Kilkenny defense now normally very solid but you've often pointed out things about the Kilkenny defense yeah well normally very solid but you also remember that they have four fellas that are 30 or over you know so that they were always kind of question marks about our pace but now it has got more emphasized yes. especially in the last year now if you look, look at this first ball they come here when John O'Brien gets the ball and Brian Hogan who's brilliant in there now look at how slow he is at getting back to John O'Brien so the, the, there is that lack of pace so how do you exploit it the best way to exploit it is you run at them okay now as you run at them now the thing about Andy Smith running at Brian Hogan there is Niall Buck had dragged him out to the side he had left the centre low open and again here with, 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 you see rather than let the man back they're going to foul. So a, a huge aspect of today's game will be Galway getting the ball, running at the defence. Now, the great work here, right, David Buck gets the goal, but the great work was done by the other fouls mm, because mm, they had mm. dragged the other defenders out of position. Mm. You know, so 
uh, he, like here, how are they going to cope with this man today? Another big conundrum facing this now. This is a brilliant run here. Now all the Kilkenny defenders are back, but they're not closing down the same way as they used before. Usually they'd be in right on top of the man attacking down. That was a brilliant score from, from, from David Burke, but it was the way he got through those Kilkenny defenders is something that wouldn't ha have happened two or three years ago. They'd have surrounded you, they'd have swarmed you, mm. and they'd have, they'd have stopped you from hitting it. Now, the night after that, Brian Cody and his men met in Langtons, and they drew up a plan yes. as to how are we going to counteract this running. And they seem to have decided, anyway, that we're going to go on a man-marking policy. Because it no, doesn't matter then how many times a forward changes position, Provided there's a man marking mm -hmm. it. That yeah. wasn't happening in the Leinster final. No. Will it happen today or will they have some other plan? All right, well, it remains to be seen now. Another part of All Ireland weekend is the annual Kilmacud Croaks Sevens, a great uh, festival of hurling bringing clubs from all over Ireland to the South County uh, Dublin GEA Club. Will it prove to be a good start to the weekend for Galway with both Gort and Mollyup making the final? And indeed, it was Mollyup who won out uh, on a final score of nine goals and nine points to seven goals and eight points. And the Leicester Council chairman, Martin Skelly, was on hand to present the cup to the winners. And congratulations indeed to Mollyup. Now, one great piece of sadness, unfortunately, for from the weekend for Kilmacud Crokes was the death of their chairman, Tom Murphy, after a very uh, brief illness. Uh, Tom will be greatly missed by the club. Our sympathies, indeed, to Tom, his family and his friends. And I know he would have been here today because the minor goalkeeper for Dublin, uh, young Kim McGowan, he would have been here to see him in action. All right. Time for us to take a break here at Croke Park. Still to come on the programme, we'll be hearing from some of the legends of Galway and Kilkenny hurling. We'll be keeping an eye on a very special pageant here at Croke Park today. And we'll be hearing from the man at the centre of the Cats' phenomenal success, their manager, Brian Cody. People have spoken about the physicality of the game, and the physicality now is a big word, a big buzzword about hurling and all the rest of it. But I would defy anybody to show me where we took part in any dirty play on that game, in that game. Welcome back to our coverage of the All-Ireland Hurling Final of 2012. A Galway may not have won the All-Ireland Hurling title in almost a quarter of a century, but they've certainly produced plenty of fine hurlers down through the years, including lethal forwards who knew how to get the vital scores. Well, we spoke to two of them recently about what it takes to get the big scores on the big day. felt uh, if you're playing in the full fall in a particular when you do get possession you have to have your your first option has to be to go for goal yourself turn uh, beat your man take him on and if it's on have a go if it's not laid off there's to give it to lane always available there's a lot of good running little pass inside to joe cooney marked by bobby ryan and john kennedy the shot by cooney is over the bar for a good forward you need to be a team player and you have to be an all-rounder and i think the way the game has gone now Nearly positions are out the window, so you could find yourself a corner forward, you could find yourself a win forward, so you have to be able to win your own position, but not to panic when you get it, and to always have vision around you, to see if there's someone else in a better position than yourself, to make sure that they are going to get the ball. You know, shooting from impossible angles and not giving a ball in time, and that type of thing, you know, you know yourself, that, that doesn't fit into team play. When you're under pressure and when the opposition are on top and when you need a score, who's the guy that'll win a hard ball and, and, and a ball maybe he has no right to win and, and set up a colleague or throw it over the bar himself? And I think that's something that this, this set of forwards have brought to the table. I think that a lot of them are capable of winning a hard ball and taking on the challenge and throwing it over the bar or creating the score. Canning, strong, powerful and deadly accurate. Well, there's no doubt that Joe Canning is, a, is an excellent horror. He has everything you want in, in a forward. He's big, he's good hands, and you know, he, he's a great team player as well. He has that bit of pace to get away from his man when, when he knows he has to do it. In 1980, we had John Connolly, you know, in 88, we had Joe Coney, in 2012, Joe Canning. 
Galway, despite the fact that it's a team game and a squad game, uh, your, your marquee player has to stand up and, and, and really deliver on the day and there will be some pressure on Joe Canning and whilst it's his first in our Ireland final, I don't think he'll be one bit phased. I think he's looking forward to this day big time and a great opportunity for him to display his power, his aerial ability, his striking, you know, and uh, it's, it's great that Joe has the centre stage on Sunday to display those talents. A little piece of magic from one of the greatest teams we've seen. I suppose there's one thing with Kenny, they're great at getting goals. And if we can, if our backs can stop that, if we, we can close that out, then we have a chance. The, the intensity goal we had in the Leinster final has to be repeated. And I think some of the Kilkenny players that day were below par. And we've got to be with them at half time. And if we are, we have a chance. Uh, we're starved for an All-Ireland in Galway. We've had so much underage success. I think the whole country would be winning on Galway. And I think if we're there or thereabouts with five minutes to go, we can push on and win. But we'll have to bring our A game to Croke Park. Yeah, two of the greats of Galway hurling there, Tomás Small Cahy. No one player makes a team, whether you're Henry Shefflin or Joe Canning or whatever. But nonetheless, Joe Canning still keeps popping up on the headlines. Well, Michael, he is the pretender to, to Shefflin, realistically. You, know, you, might, you, you might say there's one great player in Shefflin maybe coming to the end of his term, but this guy, look, I mean, we're seeing pictures here. This is Joe on the left-hand side back in 2010. Mm. Maybe a uh, college life, a bit of mother scooping and stuff like that. Um, he still wasn't a bad player back then, but look, 2012, this guy's a different man completely. I mean, his fitness levels are at an all-time high. He has dropped that extra stone, but his movement around the field, I mean, he's popped up at full forward, corner forward, back out into defence, and I mean, great players have two things that I would feel. They can get goals and they can strike off their right and left-hand side. And against Kilkenny there, get them one-to-one -one inside against Noel Hickey and the ball is in the back of there. And I said, look, great players, turn to your left, get inside your man and you can strike it off the right as well. He is just an absolutely fantastic performer. I mean, this man was minor for three years. Yeah. He, had the, he had the honour of maybe captain the minor team for, in 2000, I think it was 2006, he captained minor 2006 and they lost out to go for three in a row and I mean he was going to equal kind of uh, Jimmy Dyle's record at that stage from Tipperary I mean a fantastic talent you know and I mean when players like that come out of age and you say only 23 is 24 next month you know I mean he's past history with his family the six in the family seven years before Joe came along Back in, back in the fields he was actually out in the fields training he was hitting the ball off his left he was hitting the ball off his right he was hitting it off his left saying he was copying Pat Fox he was hitting it off his right hand side saying that he was going to be his brother Frank and also I mean when you put in that level of practice mm. when you put in that level of effort mm. you're going to reap the reward you know and I suppose like all players coming to an all Ireland final there is big tension on Joe Cooney there is big pressure on Joe Cooney you know and I mean I'm sure if you're inside in your family home like we all were before all Ireland finals and you're going out the door I'm sure the mother and the father there to wish you the best to look and maybe there's a sprinkle of holy water and Look, if Joe performs today, he scored already 132 in three championship matches this year, right? He hasn't better that in 2008. If he does that, God, we have a chance. All right, Michael, in this case, make sure you've eaten your breakfast as well. <laughs> <laughs> time for some more opinion on today's big game. This time we're going to head down pitch side where Darmeloni is joined by two more of our regular panellists here on the Sunday game. Michael, thanks a lot. Very special to be down here on the pitch and very special to be in the company of Cyril Farrell and Eddie Brennan, two men who know what this day is all about. Eddie, first of all, for you, on a personal level, what's it like being down here and not in, inside in the dressing room? Yeah, it's, it's definitely starting to kick in now, I suppose. Up to now, it hasn't really been uh, much of an effect.